the pictures in your mind. Ezekiel 4 begins a series of 12 messages about the fall of Jerusalem that God gave to Ezekiel for the people who were in Babylonian captivity. Jerusalem was still standing at the time. Many people believed that God would not allow Jerusalem to fall since his temple was there. They were mistaken. In chapter 8, we see God providing Ezekiel with the reasons for his judgment through a sequence of scenarios. God revealed to Ezekiel the abominations and horrible evil of the people. Ezekiel 4 verses 1 to 3, New King James Version. You also, son of man, take a clay tablet and lay it before you and portray on it a city, Jerusalem. Lay siege against it, build a siege wall against it, and heap up a mound against it. Set camps against it also, and place battering rams against it all around. Moreover, take for yourself an iron plate, and set it as an iron wall between you and the city. Set your face against it, and it shall be besieged, and you shall lay siege against it. This will be a sign to the house of Israel. 1. Spiritual Abominations Ezekiel 8 verses 1 to 3, New King James Version And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I sat in my house with the elders of Judah sitting before me, that the hand of the Lord God fell upon me there. Then I looked, and there was a likeness, like the appearance of fire, from the appearance of his waist and downward, fire, and from his waist and upward, like the appearance of brightness, like the color of amber. He stretched out the form of a hand, and took me by a lock of my hair, and the Spirit lifted me up between earth and heaven, and brought me in visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the north gate of the inner court, where the seat of the image of jealousy was, which provokes to jealousy. Remember that Ezekiel couldn't talk until God spoke to him. The leaders of Judah gathered to see him here. Then Ezekiel saw a vision similar to the one he experienced earlier. The figure in this vision could represent an Old Testament manifestation of the Lord Jesus. According to Ezekiel, the figure hoisted him up in visions of God to Jerusalem, which was 600 miles away. Ezekiel 3 verses 24 to 27, New King James Version. Then the Spirit entered me and set me on my feet, and spoke with me and said to me, Go, shut yourself inside your house, and you, O son of man, surely they will put ropes on you and bind you with them, so that you cannot go out among them. I will make your tongue cling to the roof of your mouth, so that you shall be mute and not be one to rebuke them, for they are a rebellious house. But when I speak with you, I will open your mouth, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. He who hears, let him hear, and he who refuses, let him refuse, for they are a rebellious house. Ezekiel 1 verses 26 to 28, New King James Version. And above the firmament over their heads was the likeness of a throne, in appearance like a sapphire stone. On the likeness of the throne was a likeness with the appearance of a man high above it. Also, from the appearance of his waist and upward, I saw, as it were, the color of amber with the appearance of fire all around within it. And from the appearance of his waist and downward, I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire with brightness all around like the appearance of a rainbow in a cloud on a rainy day, so was the appearance of the brightness all around it. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. Ezekiel sent to rebellious Israel, so, when I saw it, I fell on my face and I heard a voice of one speaking. Ezekiel 8 verses 3 to 5, New King James Version. He stretched out the form of a hand and took me by a lock of my hair, and the Spirit lifted me up between earth and heaven, and brought me in visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the north gate of the inner court, where the seat of the image of jealousy was, which provokes to jealousy. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel was there, like the vision that I saw in the plain. Then he said to me, Son of man, lift your eyes now toward the north. So I lifted my eyes toward the north, and there, north of the altar gate, was this image of jealousy in the entrance. 
The first thing Ezekiel noticed in Jerusalem was an idol in an inappropriate location. In other words, a spiritual abomination squatted in the temple courtyard, corrupting the dwelling place of the Lord's majesty. Image, as in jealousy image, could be interpreted as sex goddess. An idol of Ashtaroth, one of the Babylonian gods, had apparently been installed in the temple. We may see why the Lord was roused to jealousy. Some individuals believe that envy is a terrible thing. Most of them are. Jealousy, on the other hand, can be appropriate. God is even said to be a jealous God in the Bible. He forbade the making or worship of graven images. However, the people of God were guilty of spiritual abominations and disobedience here. Exodus 34 verse 14, New King James Version For you shall worship no other god, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Exodus 20 verses 3 to 5, New King James Version You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. Ezekiel 8 verses 5 and 6, New King James Version. Then he said to me, Son of man, lift your eyes now toward the north. So I lifted my eyes toward the north, and there, north of the altar gate, was this image of jealousy in the entrance. Furthermore, he said to me, Son of man, do you see what they are doing? The great abominations that the house of Israel commits here, to make me go far away from my sanctuary? Now, turn again, you will see greater abominations. Then God revealed to Ezekiel that the people were committed in immorality in addition to idolatry. Idolatry and immorality are inextricably linked. When people abandon the worship of the actual God in favor of the worship of idols, they commit immorality. Romans 1 verses 18 to 32, New King James Version. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because, although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind, to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them.
The spiritual abominations and idols of the people in the temple were bad enough, but the Lord told Ezekiel he would see greater abominations. 2. Personal Abominations Ezekiel 8 verses 7 to 13, New King James Version. So he brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, there was a hole in the wall. Then he said to me, Son of man, dig into the wall. And when I dug into the wall, there was a door. And he said to me, Go in and see the wicked abominations which they are doing there. So I went in and saw, and there, every sort of creeping thing, abominable beasts, and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed all around on the walls. And there stood before them seventy men of the elders of the house of Israel, and in their midst stood Jazaniah, the son of Shaphan. Each man had a censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Then he said to me, Son of man, have you seen what the elders of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the room of his idols? For they say, The Lord does not see us. The Lord has forsaken the land. As Ezekiel approached a door, he noticed a hole in the wall. Once inside, Ezekiel discovered a room with carved snakes, lizards, and other horrific creatures on the walls. What was the situation? Ezekiel discovered that Israel's spiritual leaders were worshipping the terrible pictures engraved on the walls in a hidden location. These images depicted Egyptian gods as well as other deities. Because God was not present, these leaders believed their deeds were hidden. All of us have a secret place, the part of us that no one else sees. That secret place is where we really worship. What does God see in our secret places? God began revealing Ezekiel the images in the people's thoughts, and the images were filthy. Before we speculate about the people of Ezekiel's day, we must understand that we all have mental images. Everything we view creates images on the brain's walls. This is why we must exercise caution when watching television. Pornography is a heinous sin in our society. We can repent and God will forgive us, but those images will remain. They will follow us until God completely renews our thinking. This is why we must guard our emotions and the thoughts we accept into our minds. Proverbs 4 verse 23, New King James Version Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Unfortunately, Ezekiel would witness even more heinous abominations. 3. Social Abominations Ezekiel 8 verses 14 and 15, New King James Version so he brought me to the door of the north gate of the Lord's house, and to my dismay, women were sitting there weeping for Tammuz. Then he said to me, Have you seen this, O son of man? Turn again, you will see greater abominations than these. God also revealed to Ezekiel the people's social abominations. What was the purpose of the Lord showing him the women? He was showing him the barometer of its people's moral and spiritual well-being. God was demonstrating to Ezekiel the social upheaval produced by sin. Tammuz, a Babylonian god of vegetation or fertility, was being mourned by the women. The ceremonies and behaviors of Tammuz worship were beyond filthy, but the women of Jerusalem were in the thick of it. Tragically, we see social abominations today. Our demands for rights have so often turned out to be license for wrongs. The women of our country are right in the middle of it. Yet sadly, God told Ezekiel that he would see more. 4. National Abominations Ezekiel 8 verses 16 and 17, New King James Version So he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and there, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about twenty-five men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east. And they were worshipping the sun toward the east. And he said to me, Have you seen this, O son of man? Is it a trivial thing for the house of Judah to commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence. Then they have returned to provoke me to anger. Indeed, they put the branch to their nose. The Lord then showed Ezekiel twenty-five men worshipping the sun in the temple's most sacred inner court. 
God emphasized the magnitude of evil among the people. Their misdeeds had wrecked havoc on the earth, but they didn't care. Put the branch to their nose meant they were turning their noses up at God. They had no respect for or fear of the Lord. Ezekiel 8 verse 18, New King James Version Therefore I also will act in fury. My eye will not spare, nor will I have pity. And though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, I will not hear them. The Lord told Ezekiel that his fury will fall on the country as a result of their crimes. The people would learn that the Lord had not abandoned them. God is not to be mocked. God sees and understands everything about us, including our mental images. Ignoring or disregarding this reality might have disastrous consequences. How do we confess our sins? First, we must spend time alone with God in the privacy of our hearts, confessing our sins to Him, knowing that He is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We must repent and turn away from sin. Then, every day, we must be in His Word. Remembering that He is with us will be a source of comfort and encouragement as we strive to live for Him. 1 John 1 verse 9, New King James Version If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 2 Timothy 2 verse 21, New King James Version Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the Master, prepared for every good work. Psalm 119 verse 11, New King James Version Your word I have hidden in my heart, that I might not sin against you.